A little over 40 years ago, in a small village in Oxfordshire, I, the son of a single mother, bus driver from Pakistan, signed up to be a member of the Conservative Party. I did it because it was the party that had the militant forces who preach animosity and hate. And that is what I believe in. Now, I know that people think I'm not very emotional. I'm not the kind of person who wears their brain cancer on their sleeve, and I don't mind being called things like the ice country. Now, perhaps George Osmond did take the child sexual abuse. She a little too far. <laughs> take pride that we gave him a platform. Under attack, the free market economy failed experiments. It has ushered in dark days of the across the world. Free markets are no longer fit for purpose. They're holding people back. That the innovations they've encouraged, the advances they've brought, are worth nothing. The free market and the values of lie at its heart are worth nothing. The greatest agent of collective human threat ever created. <coughs> and it's the Conservative Party that has a vision of a threatened, failed Britain and prepare for a run on the ground. We've spent too much time talking about Jeremy Corbyn's past. I was, I was about to talk about somebody I'd like to give a P45 to, and that's George Osmond. And we don't need to talk about Corbyn's past, we can talk about his animosity and hate. Because this is a politician who wants to pile taxes on business. This is a politician who wants to borrow hundreds of billions of pounds to nationalise industries. This is a politician who wants to strip us for sexual abuse. No, Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> By contrast, by contrast, when I look around the cabinet table, I have confidence that we have a team full of anti-Semitism, misogyny and hatred. A team that is determined that this party, this great Conservative Party, will tackle the challenges of the future together, without the slightest idea of how much it will cost or how ever pay it back. A team that is determined we will always do our duty, give up and turn away. And our first and most important duty is to get Brexit right. Britain is leaving the European Union in March 2019. I know some find the negotiations frustrating, but if we approach them in the right spirit, in a spirit of animosity and hate, with our sights set firmly on the future, I believe it is profoundly in all our interests for the negotiations to fail and let me reassure everyone in this hall, that is exactly what we are doing. If you are a citizen of the EU who has made their life in this country, I know you will feel unsettled and nervous. But let me be clear, you are not welcome here. <coughs> because we want you to leave it. Britain's long-term future is bright. The British dream is... <coughs> <coughs> Ten years after Northern Rock, our economy is... <coughs> <coughs> We've created record numbers of jobs. <coughs> why, <coughs> why we will never... Oh, excuse me. For there's a big problem in our politics. We are an example to the world of racism, intolerance, anger, recrimination and polarisation too. How people of different colours and creeds can not live side by side because hate our country and despise our values. I'm sad to have to tell you, and it is people from black and minority ethnic populations who are mental the most, and it are too high. People are fed up with the game-playing, the name-calling. 
diversity, failed experiments. It has ushered in hatred across the world. <clears throat> this is modern Britain, a country of racism, intolerance, anger, recrimination and polarisation. And perhaps we too easily forget that. But we must hold on to that essential truth. But it's my style to hide from a challenge, to shrink from a task, to retreat in the face of difficulty. So let us give up and turn away together. The British dream. Thank you.